So welcome to the second part of the lecture. So uh, in the first part, we looked at the uh, um, like uh, annotating and finding and predicting the various non-coding uh, RNA, okay, uh, including the tRNA, uh, mRNA, and uh, uh, tRNA, ribosomal RNA, and microRNA. And uh, in the second part, now we'll look at how, how to annotate uh, the proteins, right? Uh, that we have already predicted, okay, using um, uh, Agnox and CAG and what are metabolic pathways and how the functional annotation by Agnox and CAG together and separately can be useful to understand the function of uh, protein. So, um, to annotate proteins, uh, basically you can always do BLAST and get the protein function and, you know, but that will give you the functional uh, information about the protein, but may not be helpful in classifying the protein into various functional categories, okay, which is also important to overall show that what are the different type of functional categories which are uh, more or less in a genome, right. So, uh, one of the earliest, uh, you know, uh, database or you can say organization of genes into functional categories was the COG database, okay, which is a cluster of orthologous genes, okay, that was um, available at NCBI and uh, it classified the genes into different functional categories based on their orthology okay so basically for a same function okay uh, for example uh, uh, hexokinase are doing some part in glycolysis there will be genes which is which are, which are present in multiple genomes on maybe in all the genomes right so which are orthologous to all the genomes right and uh, because they are originated from a single common ancestor and then basically these um, uh, genes will be in like because of the different species evolution and you know these genes might have undergone various changes right uh, but still when they are aligned they can form a cluster so i can form a cluster of all the hexokinase genes from all the genomes and they may look very uh, similar and um, uh, if the distance is less and still can be compared at least at the protein level uh, across the genomes right uh, so now, hexokinase is one gene which is involved in uh, glycolysis, which is a part of metabolism of carbohydrates, okay. So basically, metabolism becomes the overall, uh, you know, uh, you know, broader category of that kind of function. Similarly, there will be some signaling gene, some transport gene, okay, some information like gene for uh, that may contains uh, replication, uh, transcription, translation and you know, these kind of genes. So basically, the organization of these genes is uh, in different, different functional categories based on their orthology and broad functional category is um, you know the idea behind the COG or later on the Agnog classification. So COG classifier uh, is a tool which is still available but earlier it was an NCBI uh, to classify any you know uh, set of genes from uh, identified from, from a prokaryote into uh, various functional categories based on the orthologous uh, genes. So these are the different orthologous groups, okay, like carbohydrate transport and metabolism, amino acid transport and metabolism, okay. So major group if you see like J category, so J category is uh, uh, this one translation, ribosomal structure and biogenesis, okay. Then the C category is uh, basically energy production and conversion O, right, which is the post transition modification. So basically this way, um, different uh, you know type of broader ca category of functions uh, you know you can classify your genes into those categories right for example in case of e coli you can see that the uh, most abundant functions were c which is uh, basically the um, energy production and conversion okay second one was um, uh, so most abundant was g which is basically the um, yeah carbohydrate transport and metabolism, then energy production conversion, then E, which is amino acid transport. Okay, so these are the most of the abundant classes. Then J, K, L, which is translation and uh, transcription replication, were also abundant. So this way you will know that what kind of functions are more present in a genome, right? Okay, and basically you can pair a uh, bar plot or a uh, circular plot or you know pie chart for uh, to you know, show these functional categories and basically showing these kind of maps gives an overview of the functional profile of uh, uh, genes in the genome. Uh, 
okay and that is why it is important to uh, classify the genes into various functional categories and also for the uh, you know other kind of function and uh, functional evolution analysis like you may find something more evolved in some functional category so that will be uh, can be easily indicated from such kind of uh, you know uh, agnog or cag mapping right so agnog mapper v2 is one of the tool that is used for the function annotation using the agnog basis okay so um, uh, this can be to used online okay and um, uh, you can submit your sequences and it can you know give you the classification into various functional categories and also do the CAG uh, mapping also predicting the KO number which you will see today okay so basically it uses a pre-compiled database of orthologous groups uh, which is available at uh, this site okay and uh, uh, just to show like how it works so basically uh, from your sequences uh, it will predict the genes if it is not already available okay but you can always give the list of predicted genes right that will compare with its own database okay which is the agnog protein database the um, your genes okay and then derive the orthologs uh, across the uh, species and groups it already has the information for that and then do the classification into various functional categories using uh, cog or uh, pfam or keg right so this is the web interface you can upload your file uh, okay you can say the protein file or you can also show the genomic or metagenomic sequences and uh, in this case it will predict the genes also but here it can use the proteins also it can take almost 1 lakh protein it can take in faster format okay which should be uh, you know uh, and your in your case it should be much lesser than that so it should the web version is okay right and then you can specify the database you can go with the default which is agnoc5 and say submit and it will do the predictions into various uh, information it will provide including um, the agnoc category so if you see this table basically so these are the various proteins and, and their e value and you know where they match in the agnog id and uh, okay and the description or the function of that particular function in the agnog uh, orthologous groups uh, okay labels basically the geo classification the cog classif or cac classification okay and cat pathway mapping so basically it's a comprehensive tool that do the broad functional uh, classification including the uh, orthology based uh, function classification prediction of uh, gene ontology geo and also the CAG because it is matching against the database which is already uh, pre-assigned to various CAG uh, geo and uh, agnog so basically the direct comparison can give you all this information for your set of proteins right okay so um, we were mentioning about the CAG or KO IDs so basically these are the IDs which are available in the CAG database uh, Kyoto Encyclopedia of Genes and Genome which is uh, a Japanese database so basically in this database uh, or basically you can say that this database is the most comprehensive database for the uh, metabolic pathways and uh, and also in terms of uh, the disease right uh, and the role of various genes in various diseases so it also contains that information okay so it has uh, you know constructed the reference pathway maps for all the uh, metabolic pathways and uh, also the broader path even like the overall uh, reference map and you know sub reference maps also so you can always map your genes on these reference pathways for example in reference pathway there could be many things or many reactions which are happening okay but your genome may contain only a subset of those reactions so because some things may be missing or not predicted or it is dependent upon some other organism or taking from outside like we consume a lot of things from outside which we cannot you know uh, make in the body by the human uh, you know set of genes right so it will contain information of all the genes pathways maps right and uh, classified into KOIDs and map ids and also the um, reactions exact reaction which is happening for a substrate to product so reaction ids right so it's a very comprehensive database and um, that is why you know this uh, the mapping on cag pathways is one of the thing that you will always be doing for during the genome analysis including uh, the bacterial or eukaryotic or very complex eukaryotic genomes 
right so it has various categories including the maps uh, tables of okay modules of pathways uh, keg orthology or function orthologs which is actually the basically at the gene level uh, each gene will be classified to a one function orthologs ko right which are actually mapped to the pathways map ids okay uh, information about genes genomes uh, you know metabolites uh, reactions which are happening exact enzyme okay information about diseases right so okay, this is a very very comprehensive set of information that you can obtain from the cag database okay so um uh, so basically you can use it online and uh, uh you can browse the database for various information you can also uh, you know submit a query gene or a protein sequence and get all the information about it including which pathway it belongs to uh what is its role uh, in their metabolic pathway what is the exact reaction it is performing there right and you can also download it and do this locally and also like ag agnog that agnog mapper that we saw earlier was also finding the koids uh, the corresponding koid for uh your gene of interest or the uploaded set of genes right so for the or basically it gives very very detailed information for example for each anti like koid it will provide you the symbol of the gene okay the exact ec number of the enzyme that is doing the job which pathways it is involved in right and their you know map ids and also if you click on these you will get the entire map and particular koid map to that gene okay modules which or to which these pathways belong and the exact reactions which can be performed by that particular enzyme or gene that you have given as the input and its role if known in any of the disease okay so you know if you click on these information you will get more detailed information also right then on like this is one reference pathway okay so you can see that these are the genes which are highlighted so this is the gene that you have input of your interest and these locations in the pathway or it is doing the job for example converting a to b okay d to c and like that so it will highlight the genes on a metabolic pathway so that you can quickly know that in which steps in the metabolic pathway it is involved in whether those are critical or regulatory steps right and uh quickly you will know that what could be the overall implication of any change in that gene in that pathway or in terms of evolution or at least you will know that um that gene is present and that reaction will happen in that particular genome okay so just from some recent studies if you see that uh basically for um, giloy or t cordifolia uh, in the paroxysome if you map the genes that were found to be adaptively involved okay it mapped the genes based on the koids at various location in the uh, pathway so this is the pathway available in keg okay and uh, okay so it can also give you colors and uh, you know you to to show the differential importance of genes so this way you can uh, show that you know what critical steps in the pathway the your gene of interest are mapping to or at least present in that genome and um, show additional function information on that okay so there is a cas or keg autom uh, automatic annotation server where you can upload your proteins and it can uh, predict the function uh, koid pathway map reaction for that particular uh, enzyme okay or the sequence that you uploaded right so you can select from a wide range of organisms including human chimp human primates bacteria different basically uh, almost all the organisms which are available in the ncbi or other reference databases the chances are that you will find those organisms in the cag database also so it's a highly evolved and um, you know uh, database which is also going uh, keeping pace with the other uh, databases which are uh, rapidly growing right so for example for particular genome such as s cumini which is a jamun genome so you can say that the most number of genes were uh, the ribosomal gene and then uh, the spliceosome and the other kind of genes which are you know uh, cag uh, could assign to various pathways right so this gives an overall quick summary of uh, the functional distribution or classification of genes into various categories and how many could be mapped into a particular genome and then followed by further analysis okay so in this uh, second part of the lecture we covered um, you know looked at the role of uh, metabolic pathways um, uh, and 
uh, the agnoc functional classification which also provides information about the metabolic pathway or basically the koids right and uh, in the first part of this lecture we looked at the prediction of uh, various non coding rnas uh, in the genomes so uh, you know these two things are very important when you do the genome anal as an, uh, analysis and uh, you have to report these numbers in your uh, you know uh, genome manuscript um, and basically the outcome of uh, you know these analyses help you to interpret your results and data you know uh, in a better way and uh, you know write that in your manuscript okay so this is good for today uh, thank you